Well, a very warm welcome this morning to St. James on the last Sunday in October. Gosh, the year's going by fast. Anyway, today the clocks have gone forward an hour. So, I'm oh, sorry, backwards an hour. That's right, forward in the spring, backward. Anyway, we had an extra hour of sleep, which was great because we traveled down from Scotland yesterday, so <laughs> that was helpful for our family. Um, anyway, welcome to everyone who's joining us live on Facebook and who'll be joining us later on YouTube or Facebook. You're a welcome. Everything that you need is in the order of service that you were given um, or on the screen above here. Please do join in with the words in yellow or bold. The hymns are listed above here, but the songs will also be on the screen. Uh, please do get a hymnal. There are two songs that are from um, Songs of Praise, and the words can be quite small on the screen, uh, so you'll need the hymnals for those um, unless you want to move forward and use some of the front pews. So if you don't have a hymnal, please do put your hand up and we can get uh, Maggie to pass them out. Two weeks from today is Remembrance Sunday already, so that's the 14th of November. And our service will start outside as usual, but at 10.55. So it's always a later service. There'll be a short outside service as well as then a short indoor service as usual. Um, so far, we're still able to have indoor services. So um, I think last year we were, I can't remember if we had it indoor or not. I'm not sure we did. I think we only had the outdoor. So we're gonna try to do both this year until until we're told not to. So in two weeks time, 1055 outside service. If you don't want to stand outside, the church will be open. You're welcome to come in and uh, uh, just sit quietly um, and reflect um, before we all join in the, this building. Um, please do remember that every Wednesday morning at 930, we have morning prayers in the glass room. Please do join us if you're able. Um, it's a really lovely time to, to start, start your day midweek if you're able to join us. Everyone is welcome. And our Stratum Pantry in the porch on Wednesday seems to be going well. Thank you to all who are donating food. Um, food does seem to disappear throughout the day. We hope and pray that the people who need it are the ones who are getting it. So please do keep supporting that uh, for people who can't get into the Ely Food Bank for whatever reason. So let's quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship. We'll stand now and sing our first song, Come Now is the Time to Worship, 1040 in Mission Praise.
prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our second hymn, How Great Thou Art, number 506 in Mission Praise. This is a BBC version, um, so you might need the hymnal. Please do stand, remain standing if you're able.
joy to your heart. <laughs> Please be seated and Stella will bring us our Bible readings this morning. <clears throat> reading this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 9 verses 11 to 14 worship in the earthly tabernacle the blood of Christ but when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands that is to say is not part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, so obtaining eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who were ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more, then, will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our Gospel reading is taken from Mark. Chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. The Greatest Commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength. And to love your neighbour is more important than burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Stella, for those readings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts bring your word closer to us and give us perhaps a better understanding of the meaning of it. Amen. Two very interesting readings there, interesting in these times for us particularly um, as a church in this area, I think. The first reading um, from Hebrews is uh, Paul's communication to the, the Hebrews. The Hebrews were um, those Jews who had converted to Christianity. And the Jews had a long tradition of making sacrifices of blood and various foodstuffs to God and Jesus 
And uh, God and Paul, I'm so confused this morning. <laughs> I've just been on holiday and I'm still catching up. And Paul um, advises the, the um, Jews not to worry too much about the, the um, sacrifices and the rituals um, that, um, that they were uh, practicing. In, my, in, in another version, um, where it says cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death in, in this version, um, an alternative translation is um, cleanse our consciences from oh. <laughs> I shall have to speak louder now cleanse our consciences from acts of uh, useless rituals I can't actually read this so uh, you'll have to forgive me from useless rituals and um, I think that, that has a, a certain relevance to us whilst we're thinking about how we are going to do church in a different way. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean we've got to tear down all the buildings or that we've got to abandon the services that we know and perhaps love. But we do have to think about what is important. Is it the rituals and the traditions and our understanding of what makes a proper Sunday service that is important? Or is it something else? And the something else that it might be, I think, is given to us in the uh, Gospel reading. Jesus is answering a question from one of the teachers of the law. The teachers of the law were people that um, Jesus quite often said some unkind things about, but true things. And uh, one of the teachers of the law asked him this question, possibly he was trying to catch him out. Or perhaps he was just giving him the opportunity to express clearly what he thought and what God wanted him to say. Whatever the truth of that, what Jesus says is quite clear and uncompromising. The most important commandment. We're relating back now to the old Mosaic law that um, God gave to Moses and he gave it to the people. The most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. That covers just about everything. I can't think of anything that wouldn't come under that category. Everything you do should be about loving God. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that very difficult. To be thinking all the time about how I love God. And how do you do it? What, what, what does it mean to love God? How can you express a love for God? Of course you can come here and sing praises and songs of praise and, and say the prayers and all that sort of stuff. But, and that, that, that is genuinely, I think, done for most people out of a love for God. But it is a big ask to think about that all the time. When there is so much else going on in the world and so many distractions and worries and thoughts about how I'm going to get through the week with the money I've got and all that stuff, that God sometimes gets pushed a little bit to the side. So Jesus goes on to say, it's not just that commandment, although that is the most important. There's a way of doing it. And the way of doing it is to love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. Now that ain't easy either. I don't know what neighbours you've got. Mine, mine are lovely, my, my immediate neighbours are lovely. But there are plenty of the people in the world that I find it very difficult to love directly. But nevertheless, there is that commandment. And that's what it means to love God. Doing what you can for those people you meet. And almost everybody will, in some way or another, need something from you. It may be somebody who needs food to eat or a drink. It may be somebody who just needs a smile 
and a cheery good morning or good afternoon because that can lift people from the deepest of despair sometimes and there are people who are obviously in need james reminds us of, of that uh, true religion he said true religion is looking after widows and orphans it was certainly true in his day widows and orphans had a terrible but it's not that different now. And we might include in that nowadays uh, single parents and, and uh, um, what do they call people who are uh, seeking asylum, asylum seekers, obviously. Um, those, but those people genuinely need some physical kind of help. And I know we give, we give uh, money to charities, we give money to the church, and that's distributed to some people. But, I wonder sometimes if we do enough. I'm, I'm sure that I sometimes don't do enough. And sometimes again, just being there, just being prepared to talk to people that other people are ignoring is a big step. It is a real psychological pick-me-up to do that sort of thing. So I think that's what Jesus had in mind. I'm sure that's what Jesus had in mind. And that's what the meaning of that commandment is. And the teacher of the law agrees with him. He repeats exactly what Jesus said, almost word for word. And he adds at the end, and to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices and Jesus agrees with him you are not far from the kingdom of God he said that's a nice thing for Jesus to say I think that's that's a pat on the back you're getting it right there brother you're not far from the kingdom of God you might have to do a little bit more that's the not far bit but you're pretty nearly there. And what he says is precisely that. It, the, the burnt offerings and sacrifices are probably okay, but we don't need to do them any more than we need to follow any of the other traditions of the church, of our church. And it is our church. It's up to us as individual congregations, as a whole church, to decide how we go forward. And what are we going forward to do? We have a personal commitment to love God and to love our neighbours as ourselves. But we also have a commission. Go out and spread the word. That's all that Jesus tells us to do. Go out and spread the word. That's our job. So it's not just about coming to church on Sundays. That's great. And I love to see everybody. <coughs> but it is also about going out and talking to other people about the good news. About Jesus. About God. About the value of the commandments. We all know the commandments. And they are good laws. For people to live together. Even if you take the God out of it, they're still good laws. It's a good idea not to murder people or steal from them or commit adultery. You, you know, all these things are good. So that is our purpose and the church. It is to go out and spread the word. But not with a big Bible to bash people over the head with. Not to go out and have an argument with people, but just to be ourselves, our true selves, the selves that God wants us to be. Loving and generous people. That in itself is probably enough to persuade most people. If they see us being happy, being joyful, and being good to each other, as well as being good to them, that's a convincing argument all by itself but for those who have the word the words are useful too 
because some people just don't know. And that's why we have to do the work that we do with children. They don't know yet until we go and help them. That's why we have to do the work amongst asylum seekers. They might never have heard of God or our understanding of God. It's only if we go and tell them. And that is doing God's will. And it is loving your neighbour. And it is loving God. So thank you for listening. And I'll say another prayer to end up with. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your word, for allowing us to understand what it means to be a God-fearing Christian person. Help us to take this out into the world and show our neighbours, whoever they may be, that it's a good thing to love. Well, this is a little interesting. <laughs> um, our next hymn is Love Divides All Loving Selling. So it's certainly a hymn that we all know. Um, I was wondering if there was someone out in the congregation who'd be happy to lead us all in an acapella version of this. Yeah. Miriam, thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the words are number 449 in the hymnal. <clears throat> and if you find, a, if you can see the words okay, can, can everybody see the words okay? <laughs> I need to pick up any flashlights on their phones. <laughs> it is quite, if, if you go a little bit towards the window, <laughs> On this side. <laughs> this happened the other day when we had little bears, our toddler group, and we were we were in the dark for most of the group. But because we're very fortunate that there is a, a lot of light that comes into the church, we were able to have our toddler group anyway. So Miriam, if you could come forward and lead us, we'll we'll give it a go anyway. We have a torch. If anyone has torches on their phones, please feel free to use them. <laughs>
we've turned in our order of service. You will let us know what I know, it's okay. <laughs> um, this is our time in our service where we confess our sins to God and say sorry. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Together we say, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do stand if you are able, and we'll say the affirmation of faith. <coughs> do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, the Father Almighty. Almighty. Creator of heaven. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please do be seated for our prayers of intercession, which Olivia will bring us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, technology is <laughs> Incorrectly, this could be interesting as my prayers are on here as I'm trying to be environment, environmentally aware. Uh -huh. It's correct now, excellent. Um, so, uh, as I was thinking about my prayers this morning, um, there are two things really that were on my mind. One was if you wandered around Ely yesterday, you would have thought Halloween was everywhere, but we're not still about that. So that's something we don't need to think about. Uh, for me, I want to think about COP26 and I want to think about what that means and I think the power of prayer is so important in this one. So today I'm going to say, at the, as I always like to think of songs, I'm going to say at the end of each prayer, you've got the whole world and your response is in his hands. In his hands. Okay. So uh, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 we hear, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. O oh Lord, grant us the grace to grow deeper in our respect and care for your creation. Help us to recognise the sacredness of all your creatures as signs of your wondrous love. You've got the whole world in his hands. O oh Lord, help us to turn from the selfish consumption of our resources meant for all and to see the impact of our choices on the poor and the vulnerable. You've got the whole world in his hands. Let us pray for an end uh, to the waste and, and, dis uh, and discreation of God's creation, for access to the fruits of creation to be shared equally among
among all people, and for communities and nations to find sustenance in the fruits of earth and the water God has given us. He's got the whole world in his hands. Almighty God, you created the world and gave it into our care so that, in obedience to you, we might serve all people. Inspire us to use the riches of creation with wisdom and to ensure that their blessings are shared by all, that, trusting in your bounty, all people may be empowered to seek freedom from poverty, famine and oppression. He's got the whole world in his hands. Loving God, as we approach a watershed moment in our earth, please pray and be with the leaders of the world as they meet in Glasgow this week. We know we have one earth. We know it is precious. We know we are merely looking after it for you, but we need direction and we need your help. Please God, make this be a wonderful creation for our generation and generations to come. Enable us to see the bigger picture. Enable us to look after it as you have looked after us and as you intended it to be used. He's got the whole world in his hands. And now we continue reading on the service sheet. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we'll say the Lord's Prayer. As the Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have our final hymn. Miriam, would you like to lead us in that? You did so well, Les. But thank you so much. Number 486, Now Thank Me All Our God.
Jesus, listen for the colic for today, a special prayer for today. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our dismissal. And if you can see the, uh, the uh, short phrases in the back, please read it with me. If not, that's fine. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for sticking it out with us here today at St. James. And I pray that you have electricity and light in your homes. And if you need anything and you don't, please do contact us. We'll see if we can help. Uh, have a blessed week.